Hey everybody, and welcome back to more REM 3. In the last video, we conquered this massive puzzle with the reservoir and bridge thing, and now we can finally move forward after we do a little bit more finagling with this. Yeah, I kind of stopped the last video after a while just because I was kind of running it a little long, but this shouldn't take too much longer. All we have to do is just make sure that we raise the bridge again to lock it into place, and then we'll drain the reservoir again, and the bridge will be kept up, like we did earlier when we came to get that other half of the panel thingy. Um, uh, let's see, we just need to go up to the top level. And just engage the lock again. You know, it's kind of weird because I would think that the lock would be in the lock position when this is out. But it's not. I, I guess, I don't know, for some reason I find that a little counterintuitive, which caused a lot of confusion, admittedly, when I first played. But, thankfully we know, oops, didn't mean to go there. Thankfully we know what's up, so we can go ahead and go through this. Here we go. And voila, water gone. Okay, so let's see what's under here. Ah, it seems to be a cavern of some sort. Kind of reminds me of Rem 2 in a lot of ways. We see a door of some kind here. We can't control it, at least from here, though. All kinds of chains holding this bridge in place. Yeah, this is definitely bringing back memories of Rem 2. Maybe this is a part of that cavern system. Ooh, and there's a ring here. Well, something very heavy made a noise. Okay, so this closed the door. It seems like this door has two panels. Like, maybe there's one on this side and one on this side, and they just close like this. That doesn't really help us, though, so let's just open it up. Well, there's a window here. Oh, hey! You are searching for a green crystal. We will help you. If you bring an octagonal drawing that is hidden in REM, take the elevator up one flight. There you will find the key that you will need. See you soon. Alright. Hey, it's the lady in red again. At least, I'm assuming it's the same one? I don't know. I mean, it's obviously a different actress, but hey, they got a different actor for Zatias and Kalos as well. At least voice actors. Uh, I think the guy that plays Kalos is the same physical actor. They, they're obviously dubbing voices since this was originally made in German, and you can see the, limp, the lip syncing was kind of off right there. But yeah, I'm gonna assume that this is the same woman from the last game. Although, now she can mysteriously speak English. Well, she mentioned an elevator, which is right here, so let's take it up. This is probably where the green crystal is supposed to be. Here's a key right here that she mentioned. And this is presumably where we would put the octagonal drawing. So we're just going to have to make sure we search for that here in the days to come. Well, nothing else to see here, so let's continue forward. And we got a room here. Alright. We can see... Paintings? Pictures? Something. Well, we can't really make that one out. Or that one. Alright. We can hold this button down and there's lights that are flashing there. Oh, okay. So this is essentially a dark room. We just saw the letters L and N here, which are a clue of some sorts. 
We saw another button here. What does this button do? Okay, so it turns the lights on. Okay, so now we can see the paintings a little bit more clearly. We can see a guy writing something on a piece of paper, a 2x4 grid, along with a ball right next to him. This one shows a mandolin. Yep, that's definitely a mandolin. And this one shows a skull along with some kind of hourglass shaped thing and some one tooth that is missing. Well, we saw that this room had a secret here that was revealed only when we exposed it to light and then turned the lights off. So I wonder if the same will apply to the paintings as well. Let's hold these open for a few seconds and charge them up. We'll expose them to the light. And then let's just turn the lights off and see what happens when we uh, open the curtains up again. Aha! Looks like some of those uh, squares are shaded there. Let's try the other ones. I'm just making sure that it's exposed sufficiently. Alright. Well, this is different. We got some kind of quadrant thing, and the number 2 is positioned in the top left corner of that set of squares. Hmm. Well, one more painting to check out. You know, we saw that the 4x2 set of squares on the other painting had some squares shaded, so I had to wonder, is the missing tooth supposed to be a shaded square, since it's the same basic formation? Well, nothing on this one. I guess uh, that's kind of realistic. I mean, not everything can have a secret next to it. You know what this does remind me of? This area reminds me of the area f with the uh, the laser puzzle from REM2. I don't know, it just feels like that area. Okay, that turns something on. Nothing else to see here, though. We got a ladder up there, but I want to see everything on this floor first, so let's check out what's in this room. We got a painting of a guy wearing a fez, I guess, and some lady wearing a head thingy. I don't really know what that's called. I know there's a name for that, but I don't know what that's called. And here we have a plaque with some really weird words. Ga Fupak Aluz Fi Quafa Pagi. Okay. <laughs> we can play around with these. Okay, so each time we press one of these buttons, it dispenses a marble into uh, a spot here, going from bottom to top. We'll just reset that for now. But there appear to be six of these things around the room, and they have a certain order. We see this box begin everything with this arrow going to the first one, this arrow coming across here to this one. And then, oh wait, there's only four, not six. Then to this one, and then finally to this one. Well, somehow this relates to this, but we have no idea how. Well, we're just going to have to figure that out later on. But, for now, we've got a ladder to check out. Where does this go? Oh, this room! We remember this place. This is where we first looked at the bridge from uh, a pretty good vantage point. And where we opened the door to the reservoir area. Now, this is very important because we have effectively made a loop from this four-story building all the way around back to the four-story building again. Now, why is this important? Well, because there are two doors here that we've been able to open and close um, 
regardless of where we stand right next to them. You know how some doors open and close automatically? Well, we've been able to manually open and close a couple of doors along our path, but we've seen them only from one side. We haven't seen them from the other side. And hey, you know the rules around here. You gotta make sure you look at everything from every vantage point possible. So let's take care of one of those doors right now. In fact, we can even see something on this door right here. Now you might recall this was the door that led into the reservoir. This was the one that had the tally marks on it from the side where we could see it from the south stone room. But we haven't seen it from the actual reservoir itself. So let's go ahead back there and see what we can find on it. It shouldn't really be that long of a trip. All we need to do is just climb up here. Uh, oh, there we go. It's kind of awkward sometimes when you don't really know where the hand thing is supposed to go. Like, especially when it comes to ladders. Like, you can click one too many times and just go right back into the ladder area. Okay, well, this is rather interesting. Notice that there are sets of three triangles, each within a colored quadrant, and the middle one is X'd out, and there is a replacement one that is substituting it. Now, this is important. Remember, earlier, we saw um, a set of triangles on the back of one of the doors toward the beginning of the game. And the middle one had a question mark next to it. So, from what this is supposed to be telling us, I suppose what we're supposed to do is take out the question marks triangle and replace it with the one here, with the arrow next to it. Simple enough. The thing, though, is that we need to find more of those sets of triangles. We've seen only one so far. Now, the other door that we've seen only one side of is this one right down here in the cave. We've closed it from this side here where the walkway is, but we haven't seen it from inside this ladder area. So I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do... Is that. And now we're going to have to take a really long trip all the way back around. Although I guess this is good because here we can actually open that reservoir door back again. There you go. Now let's see if I made sure I remember how where to go. I'm supposed to go this way, right? Yeah, here we go. And we just use the manhole to get back there. Pretty simple. It's just kind of a long walk. Alright. Now, I'm actually going to do something for fun here. Because, remember, since we can get around back to the cavern from uh, the four-story building now, we can theoretically fill up the reservoir. And since the water goes down here, we can see what happens when we open this door with the reservoir filled up. We can also see what's on here, which is another plaque with triangles on it. And of course, now we know that the middle one has to be substituted with the corrections that we saw on the back of that reservoir door. So that's cool. Um, I'll just do it from inside the South Stone Room area. I'm just doing this just to show you guys something cool, just because, I mean, it's not required for anything, but it's really neat that the designers thought of it, you know. It's nice attention to detail, and I do appreciate that. So, let's see, we need to head back to the four-story building, which is through the right manhole. There we are, alright. Now, we haven't actually looked, just FYI, we haven't actually dealt with this gate here or 
lowering this bridge or anything like that, but I promise we're going to do that here in just a minute. That's our next stop along this whole thing. Okay, so let's just circle back around here, and I'll just go ahead and empty the reservoir so you guys can see that. And there we go. Like I said, it's not required for anything, but it is kind of cool that you can do that. And I like the fact that this is designed such that the water can just flow right through the cracks here. Well, there's nothing more for us to do here now. We've done everything we can here in the dark room. We've looked at this, but we don't really know what to do with it yet, so we're just going to have to keep it in mind for later. So, our next mission now is to get to the top of the four-story building. So to do that, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to raise this ladder because remember we've seen that this ladder can go all the way up to the top of the, f uh, of, to the fourth floor. We just have to make sure that we can get to this manhole from over here. In order to do that we have to get through this gate. In order to get through the gate we gotta lower the other bridge. So first things first, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, control the um, elevator thing. I thought that was here, or is it on the first floor? It must be on the first floor. Oh wait, no, it's on the third floor. That's right. Let's raise the bridge up first, and then we'll take this ladder back up to the third floor. Alright, so now we can raise this thing all the way up to the fourth floor, just to be prepared. The good news is that we can totally control the bridge um, on the other side from the first floor, so that's nice. At least I think we can, let me just make sure. Oh wait, no we can't. Yeah, we have to do it. Yeah, I forgot about this. Okay. My bad. Let's go back up here. Need to bring the platform back down. It was on the second floor. I do remember it was on the second floor, now that I think about it. Here we go. Okay, so now that's down, we can access it from the first floor, but I need to go back up here and uh, control the platform one more time. There we go, okay. Let's see if we can get through this door. We can't. Well, the wire to open it seems to be connected all the way up to the fourth floor, so we're going to have to be sure to look out for that. And we can open the gate from here. Thank goodness, because if we couldn't, then we're pretty much dead. And it just closes right behind us, so sadly, this is a one-way trip. But, we did what we needed to do, we raised this up, so now what we need to do is just go back through here. Now this is very important, do not push this, because if you do, you're going to have to begin that whole thing all over again, since that lowers the bridge back down. But since it's in the up position, we can uh, climb right up, and finally get to the fourth floor. After all this time, we can finally get up here, we can cross the plank, platform thing, we can take care of this business here. And this would seem to raise this up in case it wasn't here, which suggests that there's another way in here. 
So what's behind this door? Well, you're going to find out in the next video. So once again, thank you guys for watching. It has been fun as usual. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button, and I will see you on the flip side. So take care, and I will catch you then.